It's not going to change this Saturdays. Today we're going to focus on this series, Avoiding Confusion. So <coughs> we are in Lesson 5. So you can find this first, Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. Remember, last week we emphasized what we emphasized two weeks ago, three weeks ago. Uh, we, this is our fifth uh, lesson in this series. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Please, if you haven't memorized this verse, it's a good first, first, it's the first verse, of, first verse in the Bible. It's a good verse to memorize. Oh, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. It's so important. It's a very important verse. Notice. Time had a beginning. or a place where it started. And we depict time as going from this point to the right, but what happened to the left of that time? This is just a model, but who, who was there before time? Yeah, God, right? Right? God, he's eternal. He goes, he was there before time, and he'll be there after time, and he's there all the, during the time that he made. He made time. That's the beginning. Before that, there was God. It's clear. God made everything. In chapter 1, chapter 2, he, he made more things. He gets a little more specific in what the things he made and what happened. The light, the darkness, the water, they separated the waters from the waters and separated the water on the earth and the dry land appeared and the stars, the sun, the moon, the birds, the fish, the plants, animals, and then the last thing he made, people, man and woman. Chapter 1, verse 2 explains clearly he created all that. But the culture of the world today says that didn't happen. Uh, ask yourself, you grow up in school, remember, oh, let's see, yourself, a long time ago, school, yeah, when you were a child, for, for a lot of us, that's, that's been a while. Your teacher t taught evolution, right? A teacher taught that, right? School's not, uh, doesn't teach in the beginning God, no. School says, there's a big bang. You know, all of a sudden things started and there was a bang and uh, all this matter went out in all directions and uh, uh, really out of control. Here's a question for all y'all. Do you believe everything began with Big Bang, without, but without God? Yeah. No, we don't, God, we don't need him. We don't really need God because we have this Big Bang. Is that true? Anybody? You believe God made everything in six days? Six days. 
No, not, not billions of years, but yeah, four, six days. Yeah. The devil uses evolution to influence people, to make, deceive us. Many believe, yeah, yeah evolution, yeah, that that's explains it all. I don't need uh, God to create the world. Creation? No, we don't need that. I believe in evolution. Many people are, it, mo many people are in that camp. The devil uses schools to teach that over and over and over again. Kids grow up and they believe the Big Bang stuff. Now, you watch TV? Are you, you interesting? I'm sorry. Six, sixth grade? High school. Biology classes? Remember, that class changed my life, biology class. This is a personal testimony. There's many reasons, but that topic changed everything, biology. Oh, beginning. My teacher said, hey, students, you write your belief on your paper. Explain your belief. The reason things happen, all these things happen, how? That teacher explained, bio explained nothing about biology. He taught. He didn't even teach biology in that class. He forced us students to learn ourselves. He forced us to explain everything ourselves. Freshman, sophomore, you know, I was young. I wasn't. He did not say, hmm, it's okay. Truth, Truth begins with the Big Bang. Yes. No, he didn't say that, ever. He was, he said, you make your own decision. You find the answer yourself. You study yourself, and then you explain it to me. Okay, anyway, you believe that mo most kids grew up believing that, but the teachers, the books, the books teach you a certain thing, evolution. My teacher there, he required us to, to, to read three books. We had three biology books. Yeah, and they're all real fat, real thick. The other classes had one biology book. And he, had, no, he didn't have, he had three. And he said, every day when, you don't, when school's over, you go to the library, you read more, you read more than the three books. And what, I, what's this? I'm a freshman in high school. This is not supposed to happen to me. But it did. It changed my life. I thought I knew that topic. I, I remember thinking, this man is like teaching us. I thought this is going to be the best part. Yeah. I thought college would be like this. Honestly, I never had a class like that. Again, never. In college, the teacher stood up and just like gave us a sermon, explained things, taught us. But in this high school class, he said, he didn't say anything about what you must believe. He said, study it yourself, learn it yourself. Anyway, most kids grow up in school the teacher says, the, you know, what, whatever the book says, the teacher says, the Big Bang, that is truth. That is how things are going to be. That's, that's what, the way it happened. The problem with that is, if the devil is successful, people won't believe 
Genesis chapter 1 and chapter 2. I say, no, you know, that not, it doesn't agree with what I learned in biology. Chapter 3 through 50 of Genesis, you know, if I can't believe the first two, why should I believe the rest of it? Yeah, the rest of the Bible, the prophets, I don't need them because the foundation is not there. The result, they doubt God. They don't need God. The problem, the devil succeeds, and he's celebrating. You're going to die without God? You're going to die and go live with me in hell forever. That is really sad. God, the devil's plan is working. That's his plan. To doubt God, to doubt God and to die and to live in hell together forever with the, with the, with the devil. Please, be careful. School supports teaching, you know, uh, uh, television programs supports this also. Remember, I remember growing up and watching a television program called M-O-V, NOVA. Okay. Science, you know, it was a science program, you know, and, and what do they do on there? They support evolution. School supports evolution. Teachers support evolution. The books support evolution. The television supports evolution. Who supports creation? God created everything. The church, the Christians, the Bible. That's it. Hmm. This this group, this small group over here, support has creation. The the this large group ha, uh, supports evolution. Here's a question for you. Is it possible to prove creation is right or evolution is right? You can't prove it. One, one person says, no. Yeah, we weren't, we weren't alive back there. I can't, yeah. And, and God, we can't go back and see where God was before time began. Take God, put him in a, on a bench and do science experiments on God and say, hey, can we prove this? Yeah. The Bible says, person that believes in God must come, you know, come to him through faith. If you can prove creation, faith is not necessary. You, you, can't, you can't prove creation. Require, it requires faith. If you believe in creation, it requires faith, yes. Also, if you believe in evolution, it requires faith. A lot of faith. In school, the books, the TV, the influence it has on your mind, uh, you say, oh, yeah, it's, it's got to be proven. It's, there's a fact here. Here's a fact. Here. And it's not a fact. It's not. It requires faith. Yeah. Both require faith. Here's a question in the room. Lendra has a question. God knows everything. He had a plan, and, and you have to you have to choose one or the other. You know, yes, God God knew this was going to come about. This this whole evolution thing. It's not new to him. Parents, moms and dads, I encourage you, please, understand, the world supports evolution. Understand, your kids will learn all this evolution stuff. They will. I encourage you and influence them and say, you know, school says, the teachers say this, the books say this, they all teach evolution. Yeah, but hold, hold on to that thought. But the truth, 
You want to know the truth? God created you and I. What they say happened, the, the Big Bang, and everything spread out and organized itself, God created you and me. There's a special reason for you and me. Yeah. So anyway, is this right? This or God created the heavens and the earth? With the Big Bang, right? Things fit together to, you know, they, to form evolution, and it's a sequence of events. Big Bang and evolution, they, they, they go together. We believe God made everything. You have to say no to both of those, the sequence of events, the improvement of biological life, and the Big Bang. You take the Bible, and you see what the Bible says about that. It's sad that in 2007, they had a, did a survey. They asked a bunch of people, and they said 50% of Americans knew what creation was. They believed in creation. Maybe, maybe they didn't believe it, but they at least knew what it was. Seven years later, from 50% 50, 50 it went down to 38% of Americans knew what creation was. 38%. That can't be true. <coughs> Seven years later, they had had only thirty eight percent, but so so it went from fifty eight percent to 38 percent. Why do we believe God made everything? Many reasons, yeah. First, the Bible explains it. In Job chapter 38 verse 4, it says, God, remember God, was talking with Job, asking him questions at the, right at the end of book of Job, and God's talking with Job, and he says, Job, where wast thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare if thou hast understanding. Job, where were you? Explain this all to me. Yeah, I wasn't there, and Job wasn't there. No person was there when God laid the foundations of the earth. In Hebrews chapter 11, verse 3, it says, Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. Through faith we know, not through science, through faith, Evolution requires faith. The Big Bang requires faith. It does. The, belie believing in God requires faith. So you can't prove either one of them. Psalm 33 and chapter 33 and verse 9. For he, God, spake, and it was done. He commanded, and it stood fast. Remember, Genesis chapter 1, God said, let there be light. And there was light, and it happened. God spoke, and it happened. This is a good verse to know. Psalm 90 and 
verse 2? It says, before the mountains were brought forth, forever thou hadst formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. God is eternal, everlasting. Before time, before time began, there was God. And God continues through time, and he will be when after time ends. You believe God made everything first because God said it. But, but before the Bible, so you remember the Bible was written. And before there, there was a Bible, God says people could look at the universe and know everything. The universe, the, the Bible says, the heavens declare the glory of God. And the firmament, that's the, heaven, the stars and the you know, moon and things like that, the firmament showeth his handiwork, God's handiwork, how he's a skilled builder, skilled ma maker. At night, you see the mountains, and they get dark. You know, you're in the city, and you, you, if you're in the city, you can't see the, the stars. But if you're up in the mountains, or you're far, you're far away from the cities, and it, someplace where it's dark, and you can see all the, the, the Milky Way and all the stars and all the, you, you're just stunned by how beautiful is this. I remember it's interesting to see a picture. Maybe you know that. The North Star, you know, in the sky, if you, you can watch all the stars rotate around the North Star, but the North Star will be stationary. You know, it's, it, just, it just stays still, the North Star. And all the other stars rotate around it. How does that happen? Well, that's God made that decision. It wasn't a, an explosion, an accident. Organization doesn't come from confusion. God put each star where exactly where he wanted it to be, right? He was in control of that creation process. It, it wasn't a confusing, it wasn't an explosion, it wasn't an accident. God decided how, where every star was going to be, and he gave every star a name. We got a question. Lender's got a question. Stars. 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 Do stars have different families? Stars. Are they expanded? Do they have families and generations? God made that decision. Okay. Yeah. Here's another Psalm 19, verses 1 through 3. There is no speech or language where their voice is not heard. Now, this is a continuation from the previous verse. The point, the, all the heavens that, that we see, the firmament up there, the stars and the moon and everything like that, right. that speech, that language, shows God's handiwork. It testifies of God's. He's a skilled, powerful creator. This is an artist sketch, but supposedly the ideal galaxy. Our galaxy, we call it the Milky Way. And th th there's the center of the, ga of the galaxy, and the whole thing is spinning around, you know, really fast. It just takes a long time. And we're just a little speck in that galaxy. But we're in the perfect spot to support life. There's a relationship between the sun and the earth. Now, the earth rotates around the sun, and there's a specific distance, the perfect distance, that the sun is from the earth so that life can exist here on earth. 
If we were closer, we would burn up. If we were further away, we would freeze and all die. There's a perfect distance that we need to be from the sun for life. And here's the sun, here's the earth, all right, this is a picture. The earth is going around the sun, but also Jupiter is going around the sun also. And science, scientists teach us Jupiter is so big, you know, gravity is always pulling. Jupiter's gravity is always pulling, and Jupiter is protecting the Earth. You know, there's space rocks, and they're going all different directions, and they're heading for this, the sun. And in order to keep them from crashing into Earth, this giant gravitational pull of Jupiter will capture these rocks and protect the Earth. They'll crash into Jupiter and not crash into the Earth. That protects the Earth. God, why does that happen? Because God put Jupiter in exactly the right place. Um, how about this, the sun itself? It, the sun is perfect for us. It's warm enough. It gives us light, the right kind of light. If it was hotter, we would burn up. If it was weaker, we'd freeze. If it goes out, we're all going to die. God knows that. It's not, it's not, it hasn't happened yet, but God says it will happen. But not yet. God's plan is perfect. We have an ideal moon right there. It's perfect for us. It's in the right place. If it was larger, the waves, the oceans, would be out of control, and life would be impossible on the Earth. If it was further away, it, 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 wouldn't, be, it wouldn't be enough for something or other. The world is full of, uh, the universe shows us that everything that was created is in, the, is in exactly the perfect spot. Also, history, as it goes on, shows us the struggles that have happened. Uh, okay, remember? Chapter 3 of Genesis. Remember, we talked about chapter 1 and chapter 2, and God explains how everything was created. And then, who shows up in chapter 3? Yeah, the devil, in the form of a serpent. God, God explained to Adam the rules. He commanded. He said, all those trees that you uh, are in the garden, you can... They're beautiful, they're for you, the, but there's one right there in the middle of the garden that you're not, you're not supposed to eat. If in the day you eat the fruit of it, you're going to die. So you got all this other stuff, everything else. And, and Adam understood, said, yeah, that's clear to me, I got it. Yeah, when chapter 2 was done, Adam understood that. At the end of chapter 2, Adam and Eve got married, and then the devil shows up. And the devil says, did God truly say that? He questioned what God said. The devil wanted Adam and Eve and us to doubt God's word. Hath God surely said, really? He, and he caused Eve to doubt God's plan. For you and me, we doubt also. The devil says, no, God didn't surely say that. You're not going to die if you eat the fruit. He, he caused Eve to doubt, and then he denied 
that God had said that. You're not going to die. God didn't, didn't really mean you're going to lie. And, and the devil said, you know what? You see the tree there? It's fine. You can eat of the, the fruit on that tree, and you're not going to die. It's a little bit at a time. First, he said, it just, just cast the doubt in your mind. Accept the doubt. And then deny what he, God said. That, you know, you're not going to die. And then the third thing he says, you know that fruit there? If you eat that fruit, you'll improve. It, it'll be better for you. Oh, yeah? Let's see. I got first, the second, third. And then Eve took of the fruit. And what happened? The devil won. And that devil's still winning today. Getting everyone to doubt God's word. And we, d we don't believe God. Then the devil ha is successful. And that continues to this day. For example, maybe you remember... Last, last month, the translation. Oh, well, last week we had we talked about the different translations, and the Bible says this. Really? Oh, wait a minute. Here's a different translation, and it says something different. So which one? Which translation are you going to believe? And you got you have to start believing, uh, doubting. And as the doubts inc increase, you get confused. The, these, all these different versions, they, they say different things, and you say, man, I don't know which one to believe. And the, the authors of these, they say, yeah, it's fine. This says no, but this says it's all right. This says it's all right. Yeah, you could, you know, it's a popularity contest here, and we got more that say it's all right than the, the ones that say it's forbidden. For example, uh, a man wants to become a woman? Yeah, it's, it's okay. Yeah, that's fine. Go ahead. Uh, you know, there's a woman wants to become a man? W yeah, uh, there's nothing preventing you from doing that. But what does the Bible say? A man wants to sleep with another man? Yeah. Go ahead. Oh. Will two women want to have relations? Yeah, go ahead. A man wants to marry a man? Yeah. And a woman to, to a woman? You want to use alcohol, drugs? Yeah. Sure. Just please yourself, right? If you're pregnant but you don't want the baby, yeah, that's fine. We can just, we'll just take the baby out of you and kill it. Yes. It, it's fine. It's your body. It's your life. You, you're the boss, right? That's the devil speaking. All of those are the devil speaking. Remember Hitler? Yeah. You believe the, the Jews are lower people, and it's, then it's okay to kill them. Yeah, they're like, they're like animals. They're just one step between animals and people. But they're not real people. Hitler said... The devil started it all. He said, if you eat of the tree, you will not surely die, but you will be wise like God. That, yeah. You can't know the truth, you know. Just because God said it, you got to experience the truth for yourself. It's okay. You're the boss. You make the decisions. 
If you, if you don't like that translation, fine. Use a different translation. Support your way, the one that supports your way of life. Devil says, yeah, that's right. Yeah, he's winning. He's smart. He's wise. He's deceiving. And these, these people are just stupid. Sheep. The devil's plan is simplest. It's simple. He supports evolution, the Big Bang. Everything started. It started with a single cell, and then things progressed and got better and better and better. And the result, you become an atheist. You doubt everything that God said, and you will end up in hell forever. That's God's plan. It's very simple. The de that's de the devil's plan. Simple. But God says he loves you. He says, you know what? I made you. I made the star. Look at the stars up, up, up above the heavens. Everything's perfect. And I made you perfect. That was my plan. I want you to fit into my plan. I want to save you. You know, your sin makes you guilty. I, I need you just to ask me and I'll forgive your sin. Look to me right now. I made you. I love you. I want you for my child. I want to save everyone. I want you to live with me forever. I want you I don't want you to go live with the devil in hell. But people would rather be ignorant. The devil's plan is for you to be ignorant. God made us? No. All, all this, the, the Big Bang and all this other stuff happened. Evolution. Yeah, I, I, what's the matter with you Christians? How come you can't see it? It's not, it's just not true, this creation stuff. There's no God. And people will just believe it if they hear it often enough. School supports it, the television, the teachers support it, the books support it, TV supports it, everything. And so you just, you hear it often enough and you're separated forever from God. But it's true that God loves you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, please, work in our hearts today. Help us to understand, wow, your plan is best. You want to save all of us. The devil's plan, that's dangerous. It's all built on one lie after the other. Many people, they just follow all the lies because they hear them so often. And they die, and they're separated from God forever in hell. But you sent your son, Jesus Christ, here to the earth. Why? To save us. Because you love us. Please, help us to believe you. You really are. You really did make everything. You have the best, best plan for us. You want us to live forever. You want us to help other people become saved by spreading your word. We want to follow you. If anyone here is not saved, or maybe they're doubting, or if anybody's watching, and they, they understand evolution, they understand creation, but they don't have salvation, work in their heart so that they can be saved today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.